Hello, this is Warlord. Today we're going to take a look at the color ID system that's in Character Creator 2 PBR. It's a map that you create yourself that allows you to take a character like this with uh, plain clothing and change how that clothing looks. There's also built-in textures into Character Creator like uh, chain mail, there's different kinds of fabric, different kinds of leather, a leather and wood generator. There's all sorts of things that we can use without even going outside of Character Creator to uh, make uh, variations of a character. So let's go ahead and get started on what color ID is. Let me show you first, what you would need to do color ID is pick a particular piece of clothing. So let's go down here to scene. Let's open it up where we can see it. Let's take off the top, the skirt, and the shorts, and let's just work with the bodysuit. Now, what we're going to do with the bodysuit is set it up to where it will use a color map like this. You can also achieve the same thing with a color map like this. Now, I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense right now, but hopefully it will as I show you more things as we go along here. So, first off, let's go ahead and see where do we get the reference map to make that. Well, if you've never used iClone before, you just go over to your materials, your textures, and you click on the UV reference. And that will pop up a UV reference map into your favorite editor. In this case, it's Photoshop. So let's see what happens when I click that. All right. There is exactly what we need to cover up with those colors. So what we do, and it's, it's a specific set of colors. And in this case, I wanted to break it down into at least four colors. So I've got red, green, blue, and cyan. You can see I put blue over the bottom parts of the pants. I'm using red for the belt, green for the arms, and cyan is for the torso or chest area. Now this will make more sense as we go along. So when we go over here to set what kind of materials we want to use, we know this particular map has, again, four different colors. So that would be four different mats. So what we're going to need to do is make sure that we pick one that has at least four mats. You'll notice we have PBR, uh, V1, three mat, five mat, seven mat. I need four mats, so I'm going to pick five. Let's go ahead and activate the editor. If you see this, it's, it's talking about color IDs uh, between traditional and selected PBR incompatible. In my case, I keep the current selection. Otherwise, it defaults you back to a three mat uh, color ID, and that's one color short of what we need. Okay, now we're into PBR. If you want to, this is where you would go ahead and change uh, to 1024, and you probably want to do that on all of them, even though we may or may not do that during this. You want them to all match, basically. But that depends on also how your real time performance is. So let's go ahead and see what we'd have to do if we needed to turn this into, say, like just one single piece of chain mail. Well, if you drill down to it over here, you can sometimes come into some problems. So the reason I say that is navigation is just, to me, it's not as easy over here as it is to come over here and do things. Now, we're going to go into materials over here. And what I am going to do is go into the base. We're going to go down here. We're going to switch off of that. And we're just going to come into metallic. And now we have chain mail. So that's all it took to just do chain mail with, because we just wanted one thing there. But let's say we want to go ahead and start breaking it out. Well, we can come back and look at our colors. And what we have to do is add, add our map. So we're going to go into mesh data, use inputs, color ID, and that particular map. I'm going to use this one that has the big squares. And you can see already how many different sections we've broken down to with the different fabrics. These are just different fabrics. I believe this is lycra, cotton, linen, and nylon. But here's our color ID system. So now we're ready to go in and start changing it like we want. We can look over here and see that blue, and this just happens to be blue. That, that won't always happen. But blue are the pants in this case. So don't let the blue over here think that that matches to this. It does not. These just happened to be blue when they came in. The, that blue I could have used up here or over here. So these don't always match. But this blue is going to tell us that these are the pants. 
So what we want to do is go to blue over here. And let's say fabric, but I want this to be cotton. Okay, now it's cotton. And now we can't tell it from the belt. So let's go back to mesh and look. Red is our belt. So we'll go to red. Materials. Let's go ahead and make that, let's make that leather. And we'll just leave it at the default leather. Uh, excuse me, default leather, which is full grain. Now let's go back and look again. We can see that this green part is cyan. So we're going to come over here to cyan. And let's make this metallic. Plated. Now if you're going to use plated, or if you're going to use scale armor, something like that, dotted, then all of this needs to be UV mapped properly. If this is not UV mapped right, then you're not going to get the pattern that you see here. It won't be going across. It may be swirling around or even intersect each other. So things have to be UV mapped right. Now let's go ahead and go to the arms. Mesh data will tell us where our map is. Green. So we go to green for the arms. And I want that to be chain map. So I'm going to change this to metallic. And just leave it at chain map. Now, we've changed that dramatically already. So from here, we'll go ahead and look at some of the other options that we have on the other clothing. Now, let's work on the skirt. The skirt's only going to have two textures. Everything has a belt. The bodysuit has a belt area. The top that's invisible has a belt area. The skirt has a belt area. And they each lay on top of each other, so don't let that confuse you. Now, the skirt only has two different colors on its map. It's got the lower area and the belt area. So we can go ahead and take a three mat solution for that. Activate the appearance editor. And then once it loads up, we'll drill down over here to the side. And remember, we, we can go ahead and make all the changes we want, but until we put in our map, it's not going to know what to do with it. Also change this to 1024 if you want to. Now we'll go to mesh data. Turn on use inputs. Color ID. And this was the skirt. And as you can see here, we've got green for the skirt and red for the belt. Like I said, I always try to use red for the belt or something. That way I know what it is. So let's go in here and see what we have under materials. Green. Now we're not going to get into abrasion and all this. That will be coming in in one we're doing later. You can dirty all this up to make it look more realistic. Let's go ahead and go into green. Green materials. And we could make this uh, chain mail if we wanted to have a chain mail skirt. But let's go ahead and make this leather. Crocodile leather. Then let's go up to the red belt. I just want it to blend in. So I'm going to make it crocodile leather as well. Okay, now we've got that part done. We've got that taken care of as far as the skirt goes. Now we'll move to the top, and the top is going to eventually have three different color mats on it, even though we're just going to start off with two. But we'll just go ahead and pick the three mat, activate the appearance editor, and then we'll go in and, of course, load our color ID. And if you want to change it, of course, once again, you do it there. Go into mesh data. On color ID, and there's our two different colors kind of the belt area, waist area, and the top. Now we know the top is green, so we can come into the materials. I want this all to blend in, so I'm just going to make it all uh, crocodile leather, and I'm going to do the same thing in the red area for the belt. And there it is with crocodile leather. Now, if we wanted to add a cross to this, the way we used to do it in times past would be to extract our texture, go into something like Photoshop and add the cross. Well, now we can use Photoshop or, or similar to add the cross to the color ID map instead and let iClone, or excuse me, let uh, Character Creator control the colors in it and give us some variation. So what we've got to do there is go back to Mesh Data, and I've already got one made. 
that has a blue color, and I just blew a excuse me, just drew a cross on it, a blue cross on it right in the center. You can barely see it here; it's green, and we know that's going to be blue, right? But look at what happens here. There's there's no blue. We did something wrong. Well, don't worry about it. You still have your base. You could have gone and picked five mats and not had any trouble. But you still have your base here. So, pick your base. And this is where we can come in and change it. We just have to roll down here. And let's go into metallic. And let's make that pure gold. And there you have it. And all we did for that, of course, was go in and add a blue cross. And as you can see, you can add anything on here. It could have been an eagle. It could, you can add several different things on here. I mean, this is just the very basics of how this works. And again, we hadn't even got into giving it real world wear or anything like that. Uh, abrasions, cuts, scrapes, things like that. But we'll do that in another tutorial. I just hope that this helps you get a grasp on what the color ID system is. Thanks for watching.